This particular narrative or the story of the 10 lepers is found only in the Gospel of Luke. And that's not surprising because Luke is writing to the Gentiles and he has a particular interest in presenting God and God's call to all peoples. It's the outsider, the Samaritan, if you will, who shows faith in God and above all else, his gratitude to Jesus, God's servant. I'm always taken aback by the very fact that these 10 appeared to Jesus. And what strikes me is that there was a Samaritan among them. And perhaps that isn't what strikes me better still, is that for the Jewish people, the Samaritan were considered to be inferior, pagan, irreligious. They were looked down on by the Jewish people. But somehow this support group of 10 people had been formed. And what bounded, or bond, with the bound, or the bond rather, that brought them together was the leprosy, their sickness. It's often like a, a support group of people who have cancer, or a group like Alcoholics Anonymous. They're able to overcome the differences because there's something that brings them together and there's something that binds. And it's that sense of being marginated, the sense of being isolated. It's also interesting to note that when they approach Jesus, they call him master. And in the, the Gospel of Luke, he only puts that word on the disciples, the lips of the disciples. So it's probable that they knew Jesus, they knew of Jesus, and they approached him accordingly. While despised by many people at that time, obviously that was not the attitude of Jesus. He always spoke about the poor, the marginalized, and he reached out to them whenever possible. And he invites us to always do the same, to make sure that we are faithful at all times to the poor, to the marginated. And like many of the miracles of Jesus, the healing is at different levels. Obviously, there's the physical healing. There's the healing of the leprosy itself, that very marked sickness which kept them apart from everybody else. The second healing or the second level is sociological. Now they can return to the community. Now they can reincorporate themselves into their community life and into their family life. It brings about another level of healing. There's also the ritual purity because many people at that time considered that sickness was the result of sin and that somehow these were tremendous sinners. And so that stigma has gone. And finally, the ability to relate well to other people because of this wonderful enhanced self-esteem. So I think that we look at each of the miracles of Jesus, we realize that the healing is at different levels to make the person whole again. All 10 lepers were healed, and yet only one, the Samaritan, returned to give thanks. There's a story that Father Corbin Eddy in Ottawa told about his visit to a, a grade four class, and he had reviewed this particular miracle with the children in the grade four class, and he, they talked about leprosy, so they had a sense of what it was. And then he asked them, he said, well, why didn't the nine come back? And their responses were typical of grade four children. They were too excited, they said. They were homesick. They couldn't wait to get home to their families. They were obedient. Jesus told them to go see the priests, and they were doing what they were told. In the minds of the children, the nine were not bad people. Not at all. They were just human. For the grade four children, they were like other children, wanting to go home and playing by the rules. The Samaritan who returned was not trained in Jewish law and custom and wouldn't grasp or understand the significance of presenting himself to the priest. And as a Samaritan, he probably would have a dubious reception if he went to the temple to present himself. So it's not really surprising in one way. But what is so obvious to us, or should be, is that gratitude is the principal point. And it's not only the gratitude of the Samaritan, because I'm sure that all nine, the other nine, were also very grateful. They were also very appreciative. The point of the story is it was the, the Samaritan who showed his gratitude. It was the Samaritan who expressed his gratitude. 
And that's really the point of the story. I remember the theologian Gutierrez commenting on this text once said, the clean of heart are not those who observe rules and appear irreproachable, but rather those who are consistent and act with humility according to the gratuitous love that they have received. In the case of the Samaritan, he opened his heart. He opened his heart to the Lord. He expressed what he felt, and he returned to Jesus. And I'm sure, as I said, that the other nine lepers felt just as appreciative, but they didn't show their gratitude. I don't know about you, but for me, it's far more important to look at myself than to look at the nine. It's far more important to look and see how many times I haven't expressed gratitude to so many people around me, how often I take things for granted, how often I take for granted the gift that Titus speaks about today, the gift of salvation, the gift of God's wondrous love, the gift of grace. And so while I recognize and I look at the nine, I have to look at myself. And I invite us to take a look at ourselves, to look at when we last express gratitude to others, perhaps that are around us, to our own family members, to our colleagues, and above all, to say thanks to God for the gifts that we have received. Titus said, it's the Holy Spirit he poured out on us that we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. That's the motive for our gratitude. Please stand. And this day on the Feast of St. Josephat, we remember all of our Ukrainian brothers and sisters. We pray for them, we pray for their intentions. For them, we pray to the Lord. And we remember in a very special way the many people who have written in asking that we remember their intentions and this we do, for them we pray to the Lord. We pray above all for peace in our world and that we always may be instruments of peace. And for this, we pray to the Lord. All of this we ask through Christ our Lord. 